Joseph Smith once prophesied that the Constitution of the United States of America will hang as if by a single hair, and it will be up to the Latter-day Saints to step forward and preserve it. Are we seeing a fulfillment of this prophecy today? And if so, how are we, as members of the church, stepping forward to help save the Constitution? I'm going to help answer those two questions by quoting from prophets and apostles. But first, let me quote directly from Joseph Smith, his prophecy, Even this nation, meaning the United States of America, will be on the verge of crumbling to pieces and tumbling to the ground. And when the Constitution is on the brink of ruin, this people, meaning the members of the church, will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean, and they shall bear the Constitution away from the very verge of destruction." Now this prophecy is recorded in different, being mentioned by Joseph in different times and different places. And in one of those instances, Eliza R. Snow recorded that he said it specifically this way. I heard the prophet, meaning Joseph Smith, say, quote, the time will come when the government of the United States will be so nearly overthrown through its corruption that the Constitution will hang as if it were by a single hair, and the Latter-day Saints will step forward to rescue and save it. Now, I've been in a lot of priesthood meetings and Sunday school classes where this is brought up, and it's speculated that one day we'll have a member of the church who's president of the United States, or we'll have a bunch of senators that go to Washington and they do something to preserve the Constitution. But that's simply not the case. In the late 1980s, President Ezra Taft Benson clarified all that when he said this, I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith, but it will not be saved in Washington. It will be saved by the citizens of this nation who love and cherish freedom. It will be saved by enlightened members of this church, men and women who subscribe to and abide by the principles of the Constitution. Now, before we get any further, let's talk very briefly about what the Constitution is, because sometimes we get it backwards. The Constitution is not a document that provides rights and freedoms to the citizens of America. Rather, just the opposite, the Constitution is in place to protect the God-given rights and freedoms that free men and women of this country have as American citizens. So with that in mind, we start talking about the principles being preserved and saved by enlightened members of the church and also by citizens of the nation who love and cherish freedom. What are the principles? The principles are not the description of government as outlined in the Constitution. Three branches of government, equal but separate, the rules and regulations of how they function. The principles are those freedom, freedoms that are outlined, that are preserved and protected by the Constitution. Namely, they're found in the Bill of Rights. They're found in other places, but specifically in the Bill of Rights. I'm going to talk very briefly here about Amendment 1 of the Bill of Rights, which protects four freedoms. And in your mind, and in my discussion here, just very briefly, and in quotes from prophets and apostles, we're going to see if those four, just we're going to talk about just those four, if those four freedoms are being threatened today and could be fulfillment of Joseph Smith's prophecy. And most importantly, we're going to talk about if those freedoms are being threatened, how we, as members of the church, are going to help preserve and save those freedoms in fulfillment of Joseph Smith's prophecy. So Amendment 1, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, first freedom, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right of the people to peacefully assemble. I'm going to talk about those four specifically and, uh, and, and go with that. So let's looking at just those first four. We're going to see if this prophecy is coming to, to pass and what we're doing to help uh, be a part of that prophecy. So we've got religion, speech, press, and peaceful assembly. I'm going to go backwards so we finish with the good stuff, freedom of religion. So let's go with peaceful assembly. Is the freedom to peacefully assemble being threatened today? And what are we as Latter-day Saints doing to help preserve that right to peacefully assemble? In October 2020 conference, President Oaks, talking about peaceful assembly, he then shifts and says, at the other extreme, a minority of participants and supporters of these protests and the illegal acts that followed them seem to have forgotten that the protests protected by the Constitution are peaceful protests. Protesters have no right to destroy, deface, or steal property or to undermine the government's legitimate police powers. So if you're trying to answer in your own mind, is this right being threatened and thereby is the constitutional 
the, the Constitution that guarantees these rights and freedoms, is it being threatened? I would ask you this. How comfortable would you be in going into a downtown area of a major city in America right now and putting on a peaceful protest? Well, as we've seen on the news and as President Oaks reiterates, these peaceful protests are being hijacked by people who want to do illegal things and do bad, destructive, immoral, and illegal things. And so if we don't feel comfortable doing it, is our right to peaceful protest being taken away? So how are we going to save it? President Oaks answers that very question in the same talk. We obey the current law and use peaceful means to change it. We will not participate in the violence. So how do we, as Latter-day Saints, step forward and preserve and the Constitution as it's being threatened, as prophesied by the Prophet Joseph Smith? We go about our peaceful uh, protests and we do not participate in violence. Now let's go to the press. Is freedom of the press being threatened? We say, man, we've got press all over. We've got too much news coming at us in all different angles and all different medians, mediums. Certainly that's not being threatened. Well, I would ask this, is the freedom of the press, shouldn't that be tied to some truth? And I'm not trying to get on one side of, or, of any debates or the other, but if we turn on the news on one channel, we'll hear a point of view, and then we turn on another news channel, and we hear the absolute opposite point of view, and the points of view are being presented as truth. So we have a lot of freedom to push the press onto us, but is the truth being obscured? And is that the freedom that the Constitution is actually preserving? Freedom of truthful press. So what do we do to help preserve that? President Nelson tells us just exactly what to do. In January 2016, he says, Plead with the Lord for the gift of discernment. Then live and work to be worthy to receive that gift so that when confusing events arise in the world, you will know exactly what is true and what is not. How do we preserve the freedom of the press? By shifting through everything and coming out with the truth. But we as Latter-day Saints have to make the effort to preserve that freedom in the way that President Nelson just outlined. Freedom of speech. Now you have experience and you have can rely on the experience of others to answer whether or not the freedom of speech is being threatened today. You don't have to go too far in your communications, vocally, online, through social media, without a threat of, of, of a negative uh, reaction. Uh, sometimes we have this idea, uh, other people around us throughout the nation have this idea that it's my way or the highway. If you don't agree with me, then get out of my way. I'm going to unfriend you, I'm going to unlike you on social media and wherever else. I'm going to turn your, your noise off and I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to be polite to you because I disagree with you. And is our freedom of speech being taken away? If we're to liken the scriptures to ourselves like Nephi does, then perhaps we can liken Article of Faith number 11 to this very principle. Article of Faith number 11 talks about, about freedom of religion. But could we liken it to freedom of speech? We claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience. Meaning, it's okay that we have opinions and it's okay that others have opinions. And then the second half, and allow all men and women the same privilege. Meaning, I can have my opinion, you can have your opinion. And how does he conclude? Let them worship or speak or opinionate how, where, or what they may. So how do we help preserve the freedom of, of speech? as Latter-day Saints, by allowing people to have their opinions and respect their opinions, understanding and remembering that the opinions that we hold so, de so dear and so tightly, that even though people have the opposing opinions and ideas, they too hold those just as dear and just as tight to them. And so if we respect others for their opinions, they may respect us for our opinions and thereby fulfilling the prophecy that we can help preserve the freedom of religion just by doing what we learned in kindergarten and treat other people with respect and be kind. Now we get to religion. And here I'm going to spend a few moments on the freedom of religion. Is it being threatened? Let's quote from Elder Bednar. Elder Bednar says this, and he said this in June of 2020. 
He said this about the pandemic. He said the pandemic, meaning the COVID pandemic, has alerted us to the limitations in food supply, our dependence on other nations for essential medical supplies, pharmaceuticals, and other products, constraints in inventory and delivery systems for, man uh, for manufacturing plants and retail businesses. Don't worry, I'm getting to the religion. Deficiencies in our national and local health care systems, the importance of defending the borders between personal liberty, constitutional rights, and governmental authority and attacks on the freedoms of religion, speech, and assembly. He says, gathering, gathering meaning religious gathering in, in our congregations, in our words and stakes and branches, gathering, in short, is at the core of faith and religion. Indeed, if the faithful are not gathering, sooner or later they will be scattering. And because gathering lies at the very heart of religion, the right to gather lies at the very heart of religious freedom. I believe it is vital for us to recognize that the sweeping governmental restrictions that were placed on religious gatherings at the outset of the COVID-19 crisis truly were extraordinary. In no other event in our lifetime, and perhaps no other event since the founding of this nation, has, has caused quite this kind of widespread disruption of religious gatherings and worships. He then points out that in North America, jurisdictions deemed services related to alcohol, animals, and marijuana as essential, while the services of religious organizations were classified as non-essential, even when those activities could be safely conducted. He continues, while believers and their religious organizations must be good citizens in a time of crisis, never again can we allow the government officials to treat the exercise of religion as simply non-essential. Never again must the fundamental right to worship God be trivialized below the ability to buy gasoline. Elder Ukendorf in the October 2020 General Conference says this about COVID. But if there is one thing I do know, it is that this virus did not catch Heavenly Father by surprise. In Elder Bednar's opinion, and many others, mine included, the threat of religious freedom is real, and it's happened, and it's continually continuing to happen as we speak. Elder Uchdorf gives us reassurance that it's okay. Heavenly Father's in control. This didn't catch him by surprise. Let me show you and perhaps prove to you how it didn't catch Heavenly Father by surprise. And remember the important question that we're trying to answer in this video is how are we doing as Latter-day Saints, or what are we doing as Latter-day Saints to help preserve these constitutional principles of freedom? April 2015, then President uh, Russell M. Nelson, he was, or he was president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, he gave a talk in April 2015 about the Sabbath day. And after that talk, all we heard about in Sunday school and priesthood and Relief Society and state conference and, and sacrament meeting talks was Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. And we practiced. We practiced until we got pretty good at it, where we could keep the Sabbath day holy by ourselves without having to go to church and having someone look over our shoulder. We learned how to keep the Sabbath day holy by ourselves. And then in April 2018, the idea of ministering came about. They retired the programs of home teaching and visiting teaching. Why is this so important pre-COVID? Because home teaching was teaching in the home. Visiting teaching was visiting in the home face to face. And now ministering takes the house out of it, takes the face to face out of it. And now we treat each other the way that Christ would treat each other by taking care of each other. And so all we heard about for so long was ministering. How do we minister? How do we minister? How do we minister? We got, we practiced, we got really good at it. And then the, we're introduced to our three hour block. Part of it was devoted to a class called teaching in the savior's way. They're going to teach us how to teach the gospel. Wonderful, because in 2019, January 2019, we then all became teachers with the introduction of the Come Follow Me program. Now we've got the Come Follow Me program. We've learned how to keep the Sabbath day holy. We've learned how to minister without going into other people's homes. We've now learned how to teach. We now got the manual to teach from. And now we're taught that we're going to be doing all these things as a home-based, church-supported scenario. Oh, and not only that, a year later in January 2020, the new youth program comes out in which youth are, more, are working more individually instead of in, a, in large groups trying to accomplish the same common goal. They're now working on their individual personal goals in the home, home-based church supported. And so we've got line after line after line of the ways that this virus did not catch Heavenly Father 
by surprise, and it set us Latter-day Saints up perfectly so that in March 2020, church is canceled, and what happens? Nothing. The following Sunday, what did we do? Everything we had been practicing to do. We were keeping the Sabbath day holy. We were teaching ourselves and each other, no matter what our home family makeup is like, we're, we're teaching how to come follow me. The youth are excelling in their new youth program. And we just continue on worshiping the way that we were, having been prepared for when our religious freedoms are taken away from us. Let me remind you of what happened to Alma and some of the people he was teaching. Remember, he said, I behold, I behold that ye are lowly in heart, and if so, blessed are ye. And here's the point. Behold, thy brother has said, What shall we do? For we are cast out of our synagogues that we cannot worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, Do you suppose that you cannot worship God, save it be in your synagogues only? And moreover, I would ask, Do you suppose that you must not worship God only once in a week? Here Alma is reminding us as Latter-day Saints, it's okay. Heavenly Father's prepared us for when our religious freedoms are being threatened. We can, we can go on and be just fine. Now here's the thing with the Constitution, is the prophecy coming to pass? Are we seeing it coming to pass in that are the principles of the Constitution or our guaranteed and protected rights, are they being threatened? The very fact that we have discussions about this shows that the line between governmental authority and constitutional freedoms and rights has been blurred. Do we wear a mask or don't we wear a mask? I don't care what side of the equation you're on. The fact that we're having that conversation means that our personal freedom, our line in the sand, has been blurred. Can we do this? Can we not do this? What authorities do the governments have, the governors and the local leaders and the federal government have in putting restrictions on us? Do we? How far do they go? How far don't they go? These conversations, regardless of the answer, regardless of our opinions to the answers on these questions, just shows that our freedoms are now blurred. We don't see the clear-cut line any longer. Our freedoms have been threatened. I'll conclude with, the, with President Benson's quote as I, as I gave before. Faith, or he has faith that the Constitution will be saved. But as Joseph Smith said and prophesied, it's up to us. It's up to us as Latter-day Saints and freedom-loving people of any religion to step forward and live according to the principles found in the Constitution. And by so doing, the Constitution shall be saved. Doctrine and Covenants 101 verse 80. And for this purpose, the Lord says, have I established the Constitution of this land. If he had the wisdom and foresight to create the Constitution, certainly he can preserve it. The difference this time is he's now asking us to participate in that preservation of the Constitution. May God bless America. Thanks for watching. For more videos about our church history, make sure to subscribe.